This is Macro Analytics, delivering frank conversations on global macroeconomics and market analysis outside the mainstream, featuring discussions and debates between Gordon T. Long, publisher and editor of GordonTLong.com and his guests. The content of this discussion is strictly the opinion of the participants. It is in no way a solicitation for business, nor is it to be considered investment advice of any sort. Always consult a registered investment advisor before making any investment decision. These discussions are extremely hard-hitting and terribly frank, and parental discretion is advised. Good morning. I'm Gord Long with GordonTLong.com. As part of our ongoing series on financial repression, I have Dr. Mark Faber joining us from Thailand. Dr. Faber is the publisher and editor of the Boom, Doom, and Gloom Report and of the website of the same name. Welcome, Dr. Faber. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've had a lot of people on discussing financial repression, and it's certainly something that we wanted to talk to yourself about. Could, could you define it for our listeners of, of what it means to you? Well, basically, what central banks have done around the world is to push interest rates to extremely low or even negative rates. Uh, I don't call this a repression. I call this an expropriation of the savers. Because before uh, the interventions of the central banks occurred post-2008, a saver, and you cannot force people to invest in stocks, commodities, bonds, real estate, and so forth. That's each person's own personal choice. Before 2008, uh, people on their savings got a decent rate of interest. Now they get nothing at all. So either they speculate or they are basically losing purchasing power over time, very clearly. As, you, as you've seen, recently a coca painting was sold for 300 million US dollars. It means simply that uh, whereas the same Gauguin painting would have been worth maybe $3 million in 1970 or 1980, now it's worth $300 million. In other words, the purchasing power of money is depreciating. Moreover, the so-called financial repression, which I call expropriation, is very, very negative for the middle class and the working class, because we have a pension fund system. We have an insurance company system. These insurance companies and pension funds have to assume some returns on their investments in order to make the payments, uh, the distribution payments. Now, with zero interest rates or extremely low interest rates on government bonds, these pension funds and insurance companies will either have to increase rates substantially, and I repeat substantially, or they will have to diminish the payments they make to pensioners and life insurers. Where does this lead? Well, it won't end well. What it led to is a universal, huge asset bubble in stocks, in real estate, in commodities, in collectibles, in art, and so forth. Now, the way inflation works, the same way deflation works. Inflation, the problem is that not all prices go up at the same time, and deflation, not all prices decline at the same time. So we had the collapse of the NASDAQ after 2000, March 2000, and a lot of people lost their shirt because they were invested in NASDAQ stocks. Then the Fed created the housing bubble, and when it collapsed after 2007, it had a devastating impact 
on numerous, on, on a very large number of households who lost their homes. Then in 2008, we had a commodities bubble with oil going to $147. And now you know where go, o, oil is trading at. It's at the third of what it was at that time, basically. And so the money printing essentially leads to bubbles and then they deflate and hurt the majority at the expense of a few people. And this is not going to help the economy in the long run, period. Do you believe this to be a planned government set of policies from the developed economies, or is it happenstance, or what's the driving force behind this? <laughs> well, this is a very good question. I don't think that governments are smart enough to think this scheme out. But I believe the professors and the academics who never worked a day in their lives in the private sector at central banks, they think that by having artificially low interest rates, you kind of solve problems. When they actually aggravate the problems, that's what I think is happening. I don't think Obama has a clue about what is going, uh, what is happening. But the central bankers, they believe that artificially low interest rates will solve all the world's problems. Well, we're watching negative nominal rates now appearing, certainly in, in multiple forms in the, in the EU. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, this would suggest that something is seriously wrong. How does a pension plan survive in their business model yeah. in such an environment? I, I also ask myself, that's why I said, the pension funds and the insurance industry is in deep trouble. They're basically forced to speculate in something. And that speculation will end very badly. Mark, what should investors the average person be doing here, and I'm not looking for investment advice, but more direction to somehow protect themselves from this problem. I tell you, I'm an economist and a strategist and an investor. The answer to that question is simply, I do not know. The people <laughs> expect me to know. So I tell you what I would do is in absence of knowing how precisely the end game will be played, we should invest in a diversified portfolio of different assets, some in real estate, some in equities, some in cash and bonds, and some in precious metals. What's your views on precious metals? Personally, I think that we had a, a convergence of negative sentiment, of negative uh, fundamental discussion among economists and strategists uh, over the last six months that uh, have led to, in my opinion, uh, an important low in gold. Uh, I think that gold say, compared to the Dow Jones or the S&P, since September 2011, it has grossly underperformed asset markets such as uh, bonds and stocks. And given the, I believe the central banks will continue to print money. I don't believe in a currency war. I believe that one central bank after another passes on the baton. So first the U.S. prints money, the Fed. Then the Bank of England. Then the Bank of Japan. Then other central banks, and so forth and so on. And so it goes in a roundabout. In my opinion, given the strength of the U.S. dollar, and given the fact that the U.S. economy at the present time is not strengthening, but weakening, I believe the Fed will actually uh, implement at some point another round of QE. 
And under these circumstances, I think for an investor not to own some gold is almost, or gold, silver, platinum, platinum, uh, not to own these precious metals is almost irresponsible. I had talked to a lot of business leaders here in, in the United States. They shake their head because they'll tell me that they, they know 70,000 uh, small businesses have shut up first a net amount in the last six years and get, from a Gallup poll they're looking at, and they're saying that passes their common sense test. That's what they see. But then they see the market is going up. They see the U.S. dollar strengthening, which makes their problems even larger. It makes no sense to them. What should they be told? They should be told that when the when a central bank prints money, nothing really makes sense. They would agree fully with you there. That's their problem. Nothing makes sense, and it holds. Then therefore, it, they hold back on their investments. Money printing leads to inflation in asset markets. At Sometimes, at other times, like in the 70s, it led to consumer price inflation. Or we, we're in a different world. We have globalization and so forth. And so we have a huge, uh, supply of labor in the world, a huge supply of goods, not from the U.S., but from emerging economies that flood into developed economies and, de- and keep price increases relatively modest. But I suppose you also have an insurance for your house, for your health, for your life, and so forth and so on. You should know by how much the insurance premiums have gone up. And if you have children, you should know by how much school fees have gone up. And you should also know by how much fees to the government have gone up. Fines, uh, toll roads, uh, taxes, and so forth and so on. So all I want to say is basically inflation and deflation is very complex, but money printing has never ended well in history. It can postpone the problems, but it will make the end result even worse than had no money been printed. Are there any safe havens in the world that you've seen where, when I say at least relatively safe to be and to be (laughs) investing? Or is this going to swamp everybody? Well, basically, since 2010, 2011, emerging markets have grossly underperformed the U.S. And so I don't think they'll go up a lot. But if you take a 10-year investment horizon, I think there's better value in emerging economies than in the U.S. I also think in Europe there are better values among stocks than in the U.S. And as I told you, I think physical gold, silver, platinum, palladium is okay. But don't store it in the U.S. You have to store it outside the U.S. Many people, when it comes down to gold, are concerned about some level of whether or not confiscation but excessive taxes. And so, therefore, they're very concerned about what that leads to. Any comments on that? I'm convinced when everything fails, uh, the central bankers will blame their own failures on people who hold gold. And then the movement will come up, well, take it, let's take it well, away. Uh, the same way, when everything fails, uh, the central banks and the governments will say, well, uh, to the people, to the ordinary people, to the middle class, you know why you're not doing well economically? You know why your real wages are not going up? It is because of these few rich people, the 0.01 or 0.001%. Let's tax them. Let's impose on them a wealth tax. This is the way I see that the end game will be paid. And so that's why I'm telling you, you have to have your gold uh, outside the U.S. I'm also in favor of real estate. I don't think real estate will be taken away per se. But the taxes on real estate can go up. And I would advise anyone today irrespective whether they where they live 
you have to diversify geographically. You have to have some assets in Australia, maybe, in Asia, maybe in Europe, maybe in Canada, but don't hold it under a custodian in the U.S. You have to diversify your custody of your assets. Americans are finding it incredibly difficult to move money around the world with the new FATCA. Yes, yeah, sure. I know that. I know that. It's a form of capital controls still, in many ways. They can Basically, it's an informal way to control capital. Uh, they can probably still buy real estate overseas without too much trouble. But even that, I am not familiar. I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a U.S. citizen. All I know is uh, the U.S. government is imposing more and more laws and regulation on U.S. citizens to hold assets overseas. Are you seeing that more common in other countries, developed countries with large debts occurring also? Uh, less so, less so. But it may also happen in future. The U.S. government in simple terms, is a mafia. <laughs> so if it was a mafia, it would suggest there's some kind of planning and control, at least, wouldn't it, right, as opposed to the Keystone <laughs> Cops running this uh, this show? <laughs> well, I don't want to go further into it, since I'm still traveling occasionally to the U.S. I understand. What message would you leave with our listeners? Anyone who tells you the market will go there or up or down or sideways and so forth and that interest rates will go up or go down or the gold will go up or go down we just don't know because it's no longer a free market the markets are manipulated by governments and notably by the agents the central bankers and so you know you sit there and you say to yourself uh, what do I do? The best is to try not to lose too much money. So it's the uh, the return of the capital that's really key now, not losing money and the drawdowns that potentially could happen. Correct. As, op- as opposed yes, to chasing correct. chasing yield, which yes. everybody is currently doing. So it's a time Absolutely. to be very, very prudent, look for the most optimum levels of insurance, and I say insurance ways of protecting yourself through diversification. Yes. Correct. Diversification is the key in absence of having any clue how the world will look like in five problem years. is unknowable, especially when it's a manipulated environment. So that's the Correct. basically the best thing for people to uh, to do. Yes. Mark, we have to break. Thank you very much for being so honest and so frank. And well, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. We'll have to have you back again in the future. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very talk much. To, talk, Bye-bye. Talk to Take you again. Care. Bye. Bye-bye. This has been Gordon T. Long, editor and publisher of GordonTLong.com. New recordings are posted regularly and can be found at GordonTLong.com. New show notifications are available through RSS feed, iTunes, and other social networking venues at GordonTLong.com. 